and ensure that you identify your objective and you pursue it in spite of whatever happens, I think is a great quality that uh, we should endear to our own people. Leaders, the president insists, must always show honesty and respect for their followers, expressing the conviction that for the two new APC governors, joining the governing party is the best way to serve their people. President Buhari once again reaffirmed his administration's unshakable resolve towards conducting free, fair and credible elections in the country. We want to demonstrate to our people and to the rest of the world that we respect our individuals, no matter how lowly in the society. The chairman, caretaker, an extraordinary convention planning committee of the APC and your state governor, Mai Malabuni, described President Muhammad Buhari as the reason for the seeming loss of confidence in other political parties in the country ahead of the next general elections. Our newest governors of Cross River and Zamfara State defected in appreciation of what they've been doing to the nation, the uncommon transformation that is going on across the country. Governor Mai Malabuni also used the forum to announce that what local government and state congresses of the party will start from the 31st of July this year. He said the congresses were shifted for one week because the initial dates clashed with Salah festivities. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. In the meantime, the All Progressives Congress Kataka and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee has inaugurated the three-member committee to run the affairs of the party in Zamfara State. Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara reports. The National Secretary APC Kiatika Committee inaugurated the committee on behalf of Governor Mai Malabuni said ongoing defections into the APC shows that it is a party of choice for Nigerians, particularly those with progressive tendencies. For those who have been selected to pilot the affairs of the party, you have a duty to be fair and just in your new office and to allow the constitution of our party to be your guide. Well, I'm going to go door to door to ensure that everybody has been taken along. Similarly, like other concerned members of the APC, sustaining and displaying the political maturity and adding value to the peace building of the government Malabuni led Kiatika Committee is what Senator Ahmed Sani Yerima is advocating for. The crisis that happened in 2019 election will not happen again. Once you are just and fair to all, you make sure that you allow free and fair election, there will be no problem. And urged members to make the party's constitution supreme in Abuja, Salihu Abdullah Higwanara, NTA News. All indigents of Borno State now taking refuge in neighboring countries are to return home in November this year for proper resettlement by the state government following the improvement of security and stability in the northeastern state. Governor Baba Gana Umar Zulum stated this while addressing journalists after briefing President Muhammad Buhari on the planned repatriation. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the details. Governor Babagana Zulum, who was recently on a fact-finding tour of the neighboring Chad and Niger republics, was in the State House to brief President Muhammad Buhari on the plight of Nigerian refugees in those countries. He solicited the support of President Muhammad Buhari for the planned repatriation of Borno indigents back home, fixed for the 27th of November this year. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs with his agencies flats the Borno State Government, have the capacity to shoulder the responsibility of the repatriation exercise. The Nigerian military, as well as the paramilitary, will provide the security needed to ensure that the areas of return are to be secured enough, and then the willingness of the people to go back to their ancestral homes in a dignified manner. And express optimism of improved farming activities for enhanced agricultural production. The federal government has done well. The, the military, the paramilitary, and the civilian DHGTF, and the community have done well. As of now, there is no any region or portion in Borno State that you can term it as under the insurgents. But uh, the minerals have been reduced. 
We are looking forward to see how we can completely degrade them. Governor Zulum, who used the opportunity to appreciate President Muhammad Buhari for the recent inauguration of about 10 out of the nearly 560 projects executed by his administration in two years despite insurgency, gives reasons for what he called his modest achievements. We decided to utilize the little resources we have judiciously and meticulously to the benefit of the electorates. We block leakages. We had series of consultations with the communities before embarking on such projects. The political buy-in Governor Zulum emphasized is critical towards meeting genuine public aspirations in governance. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. In other news, President Mohamed Buhari has congratulated the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Abiy Ahmed, over the decisive victory won by his party in the just-concluded parliamentary elections, returning him to office for another five years. In a statement, President Buhari urged President Ahmed to continue with the good policies of his government that endeared him to the people. President Buhari also reflected on the instability in Ethiopia and appealed to parties and factions to come together to halt their country's march to civil war to save their people from the deprivations of conflict. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, was slated to commemorate its 60th anniversary in September 2020. The celebration meant to be a, a milestone in the history of the organization was however postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions. Now this year, in addition to commemorating the Diamond Jubilee, also marks 50 years of Nigeria's membership of OPEC. Lydia Samson has an overview of the significance of the two milestones. OPEC is set to remain a pivotal instrument in the oil industry to ensure sustainable stability in the years ahead, backed by the support of its member countries. Founded in September 1960, OPEC's historic journey began in a meeting that took place in the Al-Shabaab Hall in Baghdad, Iraq. Representatives of OPEC's founding members, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela attended the meeting, which is widely known as the Baghdad Conference. At this meeting, OPEC founding members wrote a new chapter in the history of international cooperation and the oil sector, leading to the birth of the organization. Sixty years on, OPEC has continued to play the pivotal role in the oil industry in pursuit of its noble objective of supporting stability in the world's oil market. From the perspective of OPEC, I would also wish to express our deep gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari, who has long been an advocate of OPEC in its overaching commitment to market stability. All of us in the OPEC family know the enormous depth of gratitude we owe President Muhammad Buhari for the pivotal role he has played in the declaration of cooperation process between OPEC and non-OPEC producing countries. These decisions were taken in response to the unprecedented demand slump resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. In its over 60 years of existence, the organization has witnessed a number of momentous milestones. OPEC moved its headquarters from Geneva, Switzerland, to the Austrian capital of Vienna in 1965. OPEC also marked a new era of cooperation in 2016, when its member countries joined 10 other oil producers and signed the unprecedented and historic Declaration of Cooperation. The declaration revolves around three key principles, transparency, equity and fairness. These principles form the core of partnership between OPEC member countries and non-OPEC oil producing partners. The momentum continued when these 24 oil producing countries, including all OPEC members, endorsed the Charter of Cooperation in 2019. As OPEC celebrates its diamond anniversary, OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Sanusi Bwakindu said it offers an opportunity for OPEC and members to take stock of the momentous journey of the organization. 
stressing that in learning the lessons of the past, the organization looked forward to the future. When the organization was founded, few could have foreseen the enormous positive impact that OPEC would have on the oil market. Nigeria, however, was quick to join the organization 10 years afterwards, and it's been a mutually beneficial partnership spanning five decades. When Nigerians come together and they work together with foreign partners, foreign investors, we can outwork, we can outdrive, and we can outdrill anybody. OPEC Plus subsequently exerts considerable influence over the global market price of oil and tends to keep it relatively high in order to maximize profitability. Nigeria, like most OPEC members, have continued to play the key role in the adherence to OPEC production cuts as well as actively participating in all OPEC programs and commitment to stabilize the global oil market. To commemorate this mutually beneficial relationship, OPEC produced a special bulletin chronicling Nigeria OPEC partnership in Abuja, Lydia, Samson, NTA News. Well, as you just heard, today marks 50 years of Nigeria's membership of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. In this special report, Mir Ugidi reflects on the impact Nigeria has made on this global body in the areas of decision making and leadership. Like the flames in the oil rig reflect on the water at the mangroves, so Nigeria, with a portfolio containing only 10,000 barrels of daily crude oil production, showed its presence in the eminent OPEC Secretariat, initially in Geneva, Switzerland, July 12, 1971. The presence of the African giant was felt and warmly received. Fifty years' journey, Nigeria is not just a bench warmer, but active in both leadership and decision-making processes. For instance, Nigeria has produced seven conference presidents, as well as four secretaries general. Each of the conference presidents made serious impact. The mid-1980s was a challenging time with market volatility. Dr. Lukman, who served ten times as a conference president, advanced dialogue with non-OPEC members in ensuring stability. Uh, people should address the fundamentals of the market. Is there a real shortage or not? We have found there is no real shortage. Edmond Dakoru went for membership drive and succeeded in bringing Angola to the OPEC family, while Ibe Emmanuel Kachuku, working alongside a dynamic secretary general, also a Nigerian, Dr. Mohamed Samsu Barakindo, in 2016, brought a new era with the historic declaration of cooperation by 24 OPEC and non-OPEC countries to address market stability and other technical issues. This noble initiative from Nigeria became Andy following the outbreak of the COVID-19 as the cooperation is now global in outlook. 2016, 2017, and 2018 were trying moments. Nigeria was exempted from the agreed production cut in the spirit of the 2016 Declaration of Cooperation. Daily production was just 1.2 million barrels due to hostilities in the Niger Delta. But in 2019, Nigeria back to its feet, confirmed with OPEC production adjustments, reclaimed its position as the highest oil-producing African member country of OPEC. Fifty years of milky journey with no regrets, and here is to the next 50 years and more to come. Mie Ogede, NTNS. And joining me live now from OPEC headquarters is the Secretary General, Mohamed Sanusi Barkindo. Secretary General, thanks for joining us on Network News. Uh, thank you for having me, Cyril, and good evening, viewers. All right. 50 years of this partnership. Let's begin to talk briefly about um, how it's been. Well, it's been a journey of uh, mutually beneficial relations uh, since uh, we joined in July 1971 to become the 11th member of this organization. And uh, Nigeria has provided uh, the required leadership as a giant among nations, the biggest producer on the African continent. 
and you can see from your reports that we have provided four secretaries general, several presidents of the conference from Philip Asiodu to Timmy Pri Silva. We have had 23 ministers of petroleum, the chief among which uh, was Colonel Mohammed Buhari, uh, who served as uh, minister of petroleum from 1976 to 1978 and as the youngest minister then among these nations also served creditably well uh, with distinction in the most constructive manner and left a legacy that we are trying to follow. So Nigeria has every reason to hold its heads high in this organization uh, for the role that it has continued to play as a consensus builder, as a leader in its own rights and uh, we're grateful uh, to all those who have uh, played uh, their role uh, in these 50 years. Well, Secretary General, certainly Nigeria will be remembered for so many things at OPEC. Uh, you, for instance, are the fourth Nigerian to be Secretary General. Um, beyond this, there are one or two things we still like to know about how the country will be uh, remembered for, you know, contributing to the stability and leadership of OPEC. And, of course, uh, quickly talk about how the doctrine of collaboration uh, came about and the key points. In the last 50 years of Nigeria's membership of OPEC, uh, the world witnessed about six, now we are in the seventh mega op, uh, oil cycle. And in all these cycles, Nigeria played a very constructive role in ensuring that we work together within the organization, despite some challenges occasionally, uh, to maintain solidarity with one another and help the market to restore balance. Now, in 2016, we witnessed what was termed unprecedented when prices crashed below 10 US dollars a barrel, when stocks built up to over 400 million barrels over the five-year average. And Nigeria took the lead in reaching out to producers outside of OPEC uh, to persuade them to join us on the negotiating table uh, to jointly rescue the market uh, from total collapse. And this gave birth to the famous uh, declaration of cooperation between OPEC and non-OPEC producers on the 10th of December uh, 2016. And this framework of cooperation uh, turned out to be the saver last year when COVID hit us and we saw the market went into complete disequilibrium and we were stunned when prices fell at one time to sub-zero okay. numbers. All right. Well, 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 thank you. But um, just quickly, Secretary General, the future of OPEC Nigeria in uh, global oil and gas, where do you see it 50 years from now? In this global transition, I want to use this opportunity, Cyril, to reassure our viewers that the future for oil and gas remain very bright. This transition is not a transition from hydrocarbons to renewables. It's a transition that involves all sources of energy. It's a comprehensive, inclusive transition because the world requires all sources of energy to meet not only current demand, but future demand. Energy poverty that is now hitting developing countries, especially in Africa, would require all these sources especially oil and gas, uh, to combat this pandemic of energy. And Nigeria will play a great role in future years because of its abundant reserves in both oil and gas. And with the passage of the petroleum industry bill, the industry's future is guaranteed. All right. We have to leave it there. Thank you very much, Secretary General OPEC. Mohamed Sanusi Barkindo, thank you for coming on Network News. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll take a short break now for some messages. The news continues shortly.
The brightest stars, they burn with more passion. See that? Shooting star. Impressive, but no legs. Now that star is called Sirius. When I was a kid, I was inspired by that star. Like Sirius, I wanted to shine brighter. I wanted to stand out. That's a champion star, right? And it warms my heart to know that right now, that same star shines over a new generation of Nigerians. Passionate about their dreams. Shine, my people, shine. Speaking of champions, the word Sirius is Greek. It means to glow. Coincidence? No way. Glow? A halo. The Nigerian Air Force is enlisting suitably qualified graduates and postgraduates for training as direct short service cadets in various professions. Interested applicants must be single and Nigerian citizens and must be between the ages of 20 and 30 years. Applicants must possess a minimum of second class upper division or upper credit, NYSC discharge certificate and other relevant documents where applicable. Qualified applicants are to apply online at www.airforce.mil.ng. Online registration starts on 26 July and closes on 30 August 2021. Please note that NAF enlistment processes are free of charge. Announcer, Air Vice Marshal Mahmoud Ndamadi for Chief of the Air Staff. Nigerian Air Force, willing, able, ready. National Pension Commission Pencom is pleased to inform all its stakeholders, particularly retirees, of Treasury-funded federal ministries, departments, and agencies, MDAs, that His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, has approved payment of some outstanding pension liabilities of the federal government under the Contributory Pension Scheme. Specifically, the President has approved payment of outstanding accrued pension rights for verified and enrolled retirees of Treasury-funded MDAs that are yet to be paid their retirement benefits, as well as the backlog of death benefit claims due to beneficiaries of deceased employees of Treasury-funded MDAs. Payment of 2.5% differential in the rate of employer pension contribution for federal government retirees and employees, which resulted from the increase in the minimum pension contribution for employers from 7.5% to 10% payment would take effect from July 2014. The Board and Management of Pencom appreciates His Excellency, Mr. President. Announcer, the Board and management of National Pension Commission, PENCOM. Here is a very tough guy who knocks out every <laughs> opponent, but now he's been knocked down <laughs> by malaria. Amatem Soft Gel. Amatem Soft Gel makes treating malaria easy. Amatem Soft Gel is a game changer. Oh! oh the opponent is down! Amatem Soft Gel. A good to come on malaria for body. Available for adults and children. Say no to malaria. Yes to life. The Bureau of Public Enterprises, in collaboration with the Nigerian Exchange Group and the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, present a one-day investors webinar on showcasing the investment opportunities in Nigeria's privatization and economic reform program. This webinar will be honored by His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and Dr. Mrs. Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed, Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning. 
Other speakers at this event include Mr. Alex A. Oko, Director General, Bureau of Public Enterprises, Mr. Oscar N. Onyema, OON, Group Chief Executive Officer, Nigerian Exchange Group PLC, Ms. Yewande Sadiku, Executive Secretary, Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, and Mr. Temi Okwola, CFA, Chief Executive Officer, Nigerian Exchange Limited. This event will hold on Tuesday, July 13, 2021. Time. 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. West African time. Register now to attend. For further inquiries, please contact Adebisi Najim on these numbers or through any of these email addresses. You want to be part of this webinar that will open your eyes to the robust but yet untapped Nigerian investment environment. As part of the ongoing second peer review process of the country, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, will formally launch the country's self-assessment report, CSAR of Nigeria, and flag off the nationwide validation exercise of the CSAR by African Union, APRM Country Review Mission, CRM Team, led by Dr. Abdoli Jani, date Tuesday, 13th July, 2021, Daniel Presidential Villa, time. 10 a.m. The CRM team will carry out validation exercise across six geopolitical zones of the country and affirm the data collected on various segments of the nation. Before the exercise, successful validation of Nigeria's CISA will make the country become the first West African state to be second peer reviewed and the fourth African state to complete the second AU APRM voluntary self assessment tool. Thank you, Mr. President, for your outstanding leadership. Announcer, Honorable Princess Gloria Akobundu. Thanks for staying with us. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju hands over the Tokyo 2020 Olympics Team Nigeria contingent to the Nigeria Olympic Committee and unveils the team's official outfit. At the event, he says, with the training the athletes have received and their exploits during the qualification series, he is confident that Team Nigeria, like their predecessors, will make history and beat the best in the world. State House correspondent G.D. Unifadi reports. The flag have been handed over to the president of the NOC. 58 athletes will be participating in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics Games, and coaches will be joining the athletes as they depart the country tomorrow for camping at the city of Kizarazu ahead of the game. And all of this, every one of these kids is made in Nigeria. Thank you. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju at the St. Forth ceremony says the country has a huge history of great performance at the Olympics Games and therefore urges the athletes to do their best by not only participating but to write their names and that of the country in the history of World Olympics Games. The Olympics is about fair play, it's about honesty, about teamwork and respect for others and of course friendship. And you must do your part to promote these Olympian ideals as you compete. Fair play, fair play clearly enjoins every athlete not to use any prohibited substance or to cheat in any way. Half of the joy and satisfaction of victory is that it was won fairly. I trust that you will, as worthy ambassadors of Nigeria, represent our nation excellently. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Dari says the athletes were carefully selected and have demonstrated the highest levels of professionalism, commitment and discipline. The ministry, he explains, organized close to 90 days of staggered camping in Abuja, Port Harcourt, Lagos and Bayelsa, a national trials and an international invitational involving five countries, he says, was also held all in a concerted effort to ensure Team Nigeria qualifies in track and field. I want to assure you, Your Excellency, that this Team Nigeria will not disappoint at the Tokyo 2020 Games. Aware that all accident and officials have all received their full jumps of the COVID-19 vaccination will ensure that our team members are staying from any behavior that could tarnish the image of our dear country before the Committee of Nations. On behalf of all the athletes, I am assuring you and our Nigerians that we do our very best and win multiple medals 
and bring glory to our country. And um, under the COVID uh, pandemic situation, but uh, we, Japanese government, is prepared for all the suitable scale or measures for preventing the infection of the company. As the Vice President says, standing on the shoulders of giants gives you an opportunity to conquer your opponents. And therefore, he has charged the athlete to go ahead into the world and conquer the world for Africa and for Nigeria in particular. From the banquet hall of the State House, it's Jide Onifade, NT News. The commemoration of the second anniversary of the second tenure of the Wiki-led administration in River State climax with a presentation of an account of stewardship to the people. Ogedin Yekwiri reports. For 40 days, the governor has traversed the length and breadth of the state to either flag off or inaugurate various development projects cutting across different socio-economic sectors. The attendance of the account of stewardship caught across a wide spectrum of critical stakeholders in the state. In the last six years, we have built, furnished, and equipped both states and federal courts, provided lifelong accommodation for all state judges, and enhance their movements and comfort with new official vehicles as well as good official residences for judges or for federal courts in the state. Governor Wicke said with determination, commitment to purpose and prudent management of resources, his administration has changed the development trajectory for the better. We have also reconstructed, furnished and equipped servers going to schools with modern classrooms, laboratories, libraries, sports facilities staff quarters and paved interconnecting road networks. Apart from his achievements in other sectors of the state economy, the governor has also focused attention on the plight of vulnerable people, including children and the mentally challenged. M. Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwere, NTA News. The Emir of Kajuru, Alhaji Alhassan Adamu, who was abducted in the early hours of Sunday, has regained his freedom. The Emir was released this evening by his abductors. Let's now join Hamza Musa Makarfi in Kaduna for a live update. Uh, Hamza, what do we know? Thank you very much, uh, Siru. Just like you said, the traditional ruler regained freedom this uh, evening. And uh, this is a cheering news for the community of Kaduna and in fact all uh, people of humanity. Uh, the traditional ruler has been in captivity uh, for more than 24 hours and now he has regained his freedom. The community of Kaduru is in celebration uh, for this uh, achievement. Uh, they have prayed uh, to God and God has answered their prayers. Uh, but of course we do know that uh, uh, yesterday the um, uh, combined uh, uh, security uh, agencies you know, went on such a rescue uh, of uh, this uh, traditional ruler and uh, he has actually uh, regained his freedom. Uh, what is left now is to hear uh, similar good news for uh, all those that have been uh, abducted uh, with him and uh, they are about uh, 12 more including um, a minor uh, that is the grandson uh, of the area and uh, that is what we are waiting to hear. Let's talk about um, a one-year-old child. What do we know about that child and uh, the fate of the child? Well, what we do know is that uh, he's the grandson of the uh, Emir. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, for somebody of uh, that age to be abducted, uh, you can uh, see the kind of... Uh, you know, rot the, the kind of uh, behavior uh, these people uh, have on, uh, you know, Nigerians that are peace-loving. Uh, this is the height of uh, inhumanity uh, to man, if you allow that uh, expression. A minor of uh, just about uh, 12 months old that have been abducted. All right, Hamza Musa Makarfi in Kaduna, thanks for the update. We'll check in with you later to get the latest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir. 
President Muhammad Buhari has felicitated with Governor Udom Emmanuel of Akwaibom State on the occasion of his 55th birthday. President Buhari acknowledged Governor Emmanuel's devotion to serving his people and praise God Almighty to sustain him with good health and happiness to celebrate more successes in his administration. And now it's time to link up with Hingino in our Lagos Network studio for more reports from that zone. Hingino, it's over to you. Thank you, Cyril. The Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, NASIMA, says the domestication and implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is the sure way of enlisting the country as an industrial hub. President of NASIMA made this remark in Lagos. Samuel Johnson has the report. While admitting that challenges abound in the country's security and economic sectors, the Nasima president said signing the AFCFTA was one of the bold steps taken by President Muhammadu Buhari to tackle youth unemployment and insecurity. He explained that the association plans to establish technology co-creation centers across the country to complement government's effort to harness the talents of youth for economic growth. Now, more than ever, job creation and increased productivity of the private sector are crucial to sustainable and inclusive economic growth and development. Chief Udabala said small and medium-scale entrepreneurs, as well as the services sectors, stand to benefit from the domestication of the trade agreement to boost the nation's gross domestic product, GDP. A growth rate of 0.51% in the first quarter of 2021, a slight increase from the 0.11% in the fourth quarter of 2020, when Nigeria exited the state of economic recession. He also said Nasima is not opposed to borrowing to fund national budget, but such should be channeled to productive and revenue generating ventures. In Lagos, Samuel Johnson, NTA News. Talking aviation now, Nigeria is set to save the sum of $1 billion annually formerly expended on ferrying aircrafts abroad for maintenance and inspection. This is because an indigenous firm, Seven Star Global Hangar Limited, has been granted license to operate an aircraft maintenance facility in Nigeria. Annie Daniels has details. Isaac Balami is the chief executive officer of Seven Star Global Hangar. Here in Lagos, the hangar already has fleets of aircrafts undergoing maintenance and inspection. After America and China in the whole world, the third highest, uh, the country with the highest number of private jets is actually Nigeria. But yet, we have all those, but we just dump those equipment here after every six months, after every year, after every uh, major inspection. You must take it to those countries overseas and you pay heavily. We should keep those jobs in-house. And if those jobs are in-house, this $1 billion will be in the pockets of Nigerians. With this, Balami says, the promotion of local content and job creation is inevitable, adding that as an aeronautic engineer with years of experience, safety is paramount to his team and him. A lot of Nigerians have worked in British Airways, uh, Lufthansa, uh, American Airlines, Delta, United, uh, Canadian Airlines, and so on and so forth. And um, we have been able to get across to them, and they have given us all the, they have shared their experiences with us, and uh, they are actually working with us today. This state-of-the-art aeronautic equipment, Balami says, is worth more than $5 billion. And the dream of the company is to have more aircraft hangars in Abuja and Port Harcourt. The MRO certification they are giving, does it allow them to do maintenance on commercial airline aircraft like 737, like all these new ones that they are just bringing. A lot of them, a lot of the airlines are changing now from Boeing to Embraer. Do they have the capacity for it? Balami and Oji Kutsu are optimistic. Nigerians will have a safer and more robust aviation industry with initiatives like this. In Lagos, Ani Daniels, NTA News. 
It's now time for a break. Network News continues shortly. Every day, different forces try to bring us down. But we never forget who we are. We are Africans. We have the power. Get plugged in. Let's go. Let's go. Airtel is saying thank you to all loyal customers in the Airtel Thanks Cash Token Rewards. Each subscriber stands a chance to win up to 100 million Naira every week. To opt in, dial star 479 hash and follow the prompts. To qualify, simply recharge your Airtel number. Each cash token gets you an 8 Naira instant cash back, plus a chance to win up to 100 million Naira weekly in the National Cash Token Draw, showing every Saturday by 9.30 p.m. on AIT and 8 p.m. On Pop Central DSTV Channel 189. All transactions done on Star 479 Hash are rewarded with more cash tokens. And you can also check your cash token balance via the same code. Only loyal customers of the smartphone network are entitled to the Airtel Cash Token Reward. For more information, simply dial Star 479 Hash or visit www.airtelfangs.ng. Terms and conditions apply. Airtel, the smartphone network. Join over 700,000 satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium Benchon. Active today, premium tomorrow. Up until a few years ago... Nigeria produced far less than it consumed, spending up to $22 billion annually on importation. Then came the import policy by the federal government. Now, to survive, the nation must learn to be self-sufficient. And so far, we are on the verge of achieving this through the intervention of the Central Bank of Nigeria and other stakeholders in support of local farmers and efforts of value chain entrepreneurs. Now, the goal of creating 10 million jobs in five years is gradually being actualized. Mission possible. Let's buy Nigerian to grow Nigeria. See, nurse, she's saying she feels unwell, despite my efforts to practice good hygiene. Mom says wash your hands to keep the germs away. Washing hands is good, but surfaces can also have germs, and you shouldn't use just anything for cleaning them. Use Jig. Jig's formula has been scientifically proven to stay active for longer, giving you whitening and germ kill protection on a variety of surfaces. Disinfect to protect, just jig it. Endorsed by National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives. Akupa, what you do? I help people grow all kinds of things. I help people keep and grow their money, so later they come back when it's bigger for themselves. Akupa, you're a magician! Just like a pilot, I help people move from where they are to where they want to be. Thank you, Akupa. ARM. Invested in your tomorrow. And Kara shopping with hey, a bad face. Hey. That one no fine. Ah, no, nice no it's big. too dull. Ah. This one. Oh, wow, this it's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, more this fabric. It's going to fade, though. Yeah. Look, let me tell you something. The new area, Ankara, it go take good care of it. Ah. True. And the price is cheap, cheap. Try new area on Yankara and colors now. At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust. Try Panadol Caplet. 
With Panadol's Optizop formula, the tablet absorbs quickly and starts providing fast and effective pain relief you can trust. Try Panadol Caplet. Enjoy faster connectivity and amazing discounts in the Airtel HBB seasonal offer. Get a MiFi for 9,999 Naira plus up to 55 gigabyte data or a router for 19,999 Naira plus up to 160 gigabyte data. Offer valid while stock lasts. More data, more you. Reliable home broadband by Airtel. The Smartphone Network. We're back in Abuja now. Bureau of Public Enterprises aims to generate over 490 billion naira in revenues as investors lose 71.01 billion naira to open the week on the floor of the Nigerian Exchange Group. Musa Abubakar brings us up to speed with the details on business news. Musa. Thank you, sir. Nigeria has generated 1 trillion naira over the years from 234 concluded transactions of previously government-owned enterprises across sectors of the economy. Director General of the Bureau of Public Enterprises, Alex Oko, said the Bureau this year aims to generate 493.4 billion naira net revenue from various transactions as approved by the National Council on Privatization. Speaking to finance correspondents in Abuja, Oko said over 30 projects had been categorized on the five segments with 22 of them carried over from 2020. Government was a company who would say that government does not have a balance sheet problem. What we have is a cash flow problem, it's a liquidity problem. Right? Because government is sovereign and it, and it owns assets you know, across the, you know, the, 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 the federation. But these assets are suboptimal in terms of their usage. Right? So we want to be able to optimize these assets, unlock liquidity from them, and use the liquidity to drive various fiscal plans of the government. You know, budgetary support or provision of other, you know, types of uh, facilities and assets. For privatization was to generate revenue for government, reduce operational inefficiencies, revitalize and optimize public sector entities, and increase investment level as a catalyst for growth. With an increasingly constrained fiscal space, Oko said current privatization initiatives are poised to impact the economy positively. And now to stocks. Equities market closed Monday's session in negative territory. The all share index shed 0.36% at 37,857.89 basis point. A market capitalization at 19.7 trillion naira. 187 million shares valued at 2.89 billion naira were traded in 4,000 and 17 deals. Zenith Bank Sovereign Trust Insurance PLC and United Bank for Africa PLC are the most traded stocks with a combined value of 980.8 million naira. That's business news. It's back to you, sir. The petroleum industry bill and its prospects for Nigeria. What are the critical issues involved? Find out on the NTA Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live, every week at 10.30 p.m. It promises to be incisive and educative. Join us. My advice to the younger generation is that they should learn from what we have started and what we have left. I did things that ordinarily I should not have been doing. What that meant was that I was working hard. Whatever assignment you are given in life, put in your best. The military years a disaster. Smoldering effects of all that is what we are trying to cure.
you're always running around. Keeping up with you needs a comforting touch from Huggies with the right stretch for how much you move. Huggies pants comfortably fit baby's tummy. Their 360 degree comfort fit waistband makes them easy to open and pull off and on. So baby can keep on exploring and you keep doing great mom. Huggies, recommended by 9 out of 10 mothers for comfort. When times are tough, we know that as a mother, one thing you should never compromise on is your family's oral health because they deserve the best. Oral B, all round protection. It's great value. It protects your mouth from harmful bacteria and also protects you against tooth holes and gum problems which can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your family's teeth and gives them all round protection. So remember, protect their future. Oral B for healthier, stronger teeth in just one week. <laughs> Capri Sun Funland. Can't wait. Hey! Entry denied. <laughs> no artificial colors. No artificial sweeteners. No preservatives. Nothing <laughs> artificial. Next up, the water slide. Nothing artificial and great taste. Capri Sun. The taste of fun. Capri Sun. A product of Cheer Limited. Go TV Biggie goes promo don't learn. Better diggy levels, better grooves, no hard at all on top Go TV. Make you not miss this a wolf as Go TV price don't go down low. For inside Biggie goes promo. Now, you fit get Go TV decoder, Go Tenor with one month max subscription. Will be 9,500 naira before for 6,900 naira now. See discount. <laughs> Make yourself enjoy football for inside your house. Cross your leg, watch BB Niger drama and shows for Africa Magic and International Series. Then Biggie Goals promo now for you. Better discount. Go get your own now, now for only 6,900 naira to enjoy max levels for Go TV. This offer not go to tell. Go TV. Love it. <laughs> How can aggrieved parties be brought together to iron out increasing cases of ethnic agitation and insecurity? Now, the newly inaugurated National Planning Committee for the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations Citizens Summit on National Integration, Peace and Security is seeking solutions to this and other issues. Ekenen Dulwe reports. Recently, various news platforms are inundated with cases of insurgency, kidnapping, ethnic agitations, economic and religious issues almost on a daily basis. This gathering here at the instance of Nigerian Institute of Public Relations is looking for a citizen approach to addressing these issues. The inauguration of a national planning committee for the NIPR summit on national integration, peace and security is meant to begin a credible process towards national reconciliation. As gloomy and scary as the picture may look, we are confident that the situation is not irredeemable. But we have some choices to make. A choice between the round table and war front. We want to reopen conversations between our people. That's why it is a citizen's thing. And it's not something that any organization can do alone. NIPR will not be taking on this task alone and it has secured the collaboration of various professional bodies, media organizations, national assembly, and state governments. I couldn't believe that Nigeria would get to a level that to discuss issues must be your religion, your tribe, where you come from. This country belongs to all of us, and we owe it a duty to salvage it. Collaborating bodies are hopeful that, like the proverbial mustard seed, this little beginning will blossom into a big tree that will foster unity and progress in Nigeria. In Abuja, Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed has expressed sadness over the demise of the popular singer, rapper and songwriter Sound Sultan Olariwaju Fasasi. In a statement signed, the minister described Sound Sultan's death as a great loss to not just his family and the creative industry, but to Nigeria as a whole. He expressed his condolences to the family, friends and fans of the departed artist. 
And First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has condoled with the wife of the former Deputy Governor of Kaduna State, Ladi Barnabas Bala Bantex, and her entire family over the death of her husband, architect Barnabas Yusuf Bala Bantex, which occurred on Sunday in an Abuja hospital. In a condolence letter, on behalf of her family and the entire women of Nigeria, the First Lady described the death of architect Barnabas Bala Bantex as a loss to not only the family or the state, but the whole country as one indivisible entity. The First Lady prayed to God to give Mrs. Ladi Balabantex the wisdom and confidence to continue overseeing the affairs of the family. She also prayed to God to grant him eternal rest and give the family the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. And that concludes Network News tonight. Remember to be part of the war against rape and rapists. Stand with the NTA. I'm Cyril Stober. Good night.